And over here is our courthouse. This has been our courthouse since 1838. And this tree on the corner here, well, that live oak is said to be haunted because it was known as a hanging tree for many years. Oh, dang. Anybody want to go see if it's haunted? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Oh, and uh, just a friendly reminder for y'all, but this is our least recommended bed. <laughs> <laughs> and then right next to it is our old jail from the 1890s. And it looks like a house except for the bars on the windows. But you know, we thought it was a good idea to leave the bars up there because we need a place to put the board of supervisors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, the old jail still has the old jail cells. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just as they were in the 1890s. As a matter of fact, that was a jail right up until they built a new one there in the 1970s. second oldest remaining church building. It's still in use today. And uh, also our oldest congregation founded back in 1817. They built this church in 1828. Yep. And everything on that church is original, both inside and out. Yep. Uh, those are even the original doors up there. And the pipe organ from 1828 is still built into the walls inside the church. Wow. Come on there, Clyde. On the now the uh, church also has uh, their very own uh, museum in the back here. It's a photographic museum, and I highly recommend that. But unfortunately, it's already closed for today. All right, they close at four o'clock, and they won't open again till Monday because they still have services at this church. But uh, if y'all get a chance, you ever come back, or if you're here on Monday, put that on your list. Uh, it is one of the better museums in town, right there. Oh, this is City Hall. Oh, no, no, I think that building was put there in the uh, 1940s. Yeah. Oh. So it's not one of our older buildings. Mm -hmm. But some buildings we had to have, you know, uh, as years went by. Got it made. You just have power to, you know, automatic drive, whatever. Huh? You don't even have to lead the horse. The horse oh, no. Horse yeah. Who knows where to go? He just wants to wander from side to side here. Sometimes he gets in the wrong lane. <laughs> our district courthouse today but back in the 1800s uh, that building was home to our opera house oh, and uh, also an auditorium for the school behind it there in the uh, early 1900s this is one of my favorite restaurants here and believe me i have several favorite restaurants uh, and uh, when I go in there, I get the uh, shrimp fettuccine alfredo or the prime rib. But uh, now all our restaurants are, you know, we've got our fine restaurants, but even the eateries are good here. You know, like uh, Flick Rick's Cafe or the Pig Out Inn down there. Yeah. Been there. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, you just can't go wrong as far as food here. Now over here is the uh, famous Yola Hotel. Now the Yola is currently closed and that's because it's going through a major remodeling. Uh, the entire hotel inside now. Now they're a little behind because of the shutdown, of course, like everything else is. Uh, but they did promise another five-star hotel and five-star restaurant there. We just don't know when they're going to get back on track for that. And uh, the Ola is a landmark hotel. It was built there in 1927. And uh, she was famous for both being beautiful and because of all the famous people that stayed there over the years. Yeah. Is that a eucalyptus? Yeah, look at how big they are, Dave. Good, nice. It's been around for a while. very long to figure out that uh, we do have our fair share of uh, ghost stories and hauntings here and there. <laughs> yeah, As a matter of fact, I recently found out that the guest house over here was haunted. And if you look up in the attic window, there's a specter up there at this very moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been up there for three Halloweens now, and after seeing it every day. Yeah, I just decided to add it to the door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But the uh, guest house is a fine bed and breakfast. It's one of our more popular close to all the restaurants and the shopping. And they do have their very own full service restaurant in the back there. Very popular, uh, this restaurant. And uh, became popular in just a few short months. was originally built to be a gentleman's club in 1904. Interesting. But the building was named for one of our local heroes. And uh, that's his bus right up top there. And Sergeant Prentice was a school teacher, lawyer, uh, who went on to become a statesman. And uh, also a famous orator of his, town, uh, of his time. As a matter of fact, his most famous speech, Prentice had inspired and then later helped organize an entire regiment. And that regiment turned out to be instrumental in helping Sam Houston turn the tide down there in Texas. But now, uh, 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 these gentlemen really had a, uh, a leisure club here. Yeah. And uh, I mean, they had all kinds of uh, game rooms and activity rooms in this building. And besides the main activity room, also known as the card room, uh, they had, uh, a dartboard room, a billiards room, an indoor shooting gallery. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. And uh, a little bit later, they added an indoor swimming pool. And in the basement, they even had a two lane bowling alley. <laughs> Good, nice. I would have joined that club. Yeah. <laughs> Man. <clears throat> oh, known for our antebellum homes here. We do have the largest collection of antebellums in the country. Most of the homes are privately owned and many still have the original families living in them today. And uh, many are also historic homes, such as the uh, Myrtle Paris over here. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, those are Clyde's buddies right there. <laughs> now, Myrtle Terrace was built in 1844 by the Leathers family. Uh, Mr. Leathers, along with his sons, controlled all the shipping in and out of the city. They owned the Natchez Steamboat Company, and they were largely responsible for uh, putting Natchez on the map as a steamboat capital on that river. Yep. Now, Myrtle Terrace was also given to one of Leathers' sons, Thomas. And Thomas B. Leathers, well, he was captain of the famous Natchez Steamboat. And uh, that was the very same steamboat that uh, was involved in the most uh, famous steamboat race in American history with the Robert E. Lee. Now, is this home big enough for y'all? Yeah. Uh, it, it'll do. <laughs> it, well, you know, it's a perfect home if you have small children because you might not see them for a month. <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> now, this is uh, Stanton Hall, of course. Uh, today, it's one of our premier tour homes. This is one that you can go and uh, tour if you like. And uh, now, it's, it's normally open seven days a week and... For the most part, they have been open seven days, and so they should be open tomorrow, but you never know around here with everything going on. But um, uh, it is also one of the finest mansions ever built in that era. Uh, Frederick Stanton spared no expense in building this home, and he was filthy rich. Yep. And really, that's the difference between Stanton Hall and the other mansions here, you know, because they're all quite large and quite beautiful. But nobody put the sheer amount of money into their home that Stanton did. And, of course, you can see that money all over this house, both inside and out. Now, there were only three antebellum homes on this street in 1857, and one of those was a Linton house over here. Uh, that's the uh, white antebellum home on the right here. Now, Mr. Linton had been here since 1810, but in 1857, he had the misfortune of being Frederick Stanton's closest neighbor because the two gentlemen got into a feud over the rising property values. In other words, these property values were rising so quickly that Stanton wanted, wanted to own the entire street here. And he'd already bought up all the land. Then he wanted to buy the homes. Now, starting with Mr. Linton. Yeah. Because not only was this house about to double or triple in value, but it stood in the way of him gaining the rest of the property on this street. Because Mr. Linton wasn't in the mood to sell. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he got tired of Stanton and ran him off. Told him never to come back. He was not selling his home for any amount. Uh, well, this didn't sit well with Stanton because, in his mind, he was going to lose a fortune here. And he was very upset when he couldn't buy this house. So upset that he decided to put that building right there, just as close as he could get to Linton's back door. And that building housed his stables. 
<laughs> that's pretty low down. David, that's something Yeah, that's something I would do. There you go. Now, this little hole right here, and that is a very nice home on the inside, uh, was once our uh, one of our old firehouses. And uh, this became the Phoenix Firehouse in 1839, back when they had the very first horse-drawn fire wagons in town here. And uh, before that, it was a livery stable. This is where you come to get a horse. And that tackle hanging up by the loft door there, that is the original tackle, and it's been hanging up there ever since that building was built, wow. somewhere around 1800. One of our other drivers swears that building right there was a Taco Bell in the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> Franklin Street, and uh, most of our shops can be found here on Franklin Street. And most of those are the antique shops. But this is also uh, where you did your shopping in the 1800s as well. And some of these old buildings were actually department stores. As a matter of fact, this one on the corner here was a department store from uh, 1869 all the way up through the 1970s. Yeah, I didn't even know they had department stores in the 1800s. <laughs> and uh, Commerce Street here was a commercial center of the city. Uh, many of these old buildings were the cotton warehouses and the cotton mills. That was a fire. Uh, that was years ago. Most likely, that happened in the uh, early 1900s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm guessing though. Uh, I don't think anybody really knows when it burned down. But if it burned down in the 1800s, that building would have been replaced by then. Uh, but uh, in the early 1900s, the Natchez was starting to decline. They may not have uh, put another building up at that time. <laughs> Take the Christmas stuff in. Oh, God. Do they keep this tree up all year? Oh, no. No, it will <laughs> come down at the end of the month. Um. <laughs> now, next to this old bank, uh, the city installed a memorial to the Natchez Indians here which also served as our watering hole. Because in the back there was a fountain and you could get yourself a drink. In the front, your horse could get a drink. And down at the bottom, they even had bowls for your dogs and your cats. Goodness. Oh, I'm glad. Now, you didn't want to miss your mortgage payment at this particular bank. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, there were no desks to put you out that back door there. <laughs> Like that one, yeah. <laughs> no, I really don't know if they did that or not. Uh, <laughs> we can't watch too many questions. <laughs> and then over here to the left is the uh, beautiful St. Mary's Basilica. Uh, that's a uh, landmark church built there in the 1840s. 
This was once home to the uh, Catholic diocese for this entire region. And uh, if y'all would like to go see that, you're more than welcome. I mean, the doors are always open there at St. Mary's. Here. He has his very own fan club in town. Okay. Yep, and that fan club meets right over here in this little preschool. Oh, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they love that. This preschool? Yeah, and the minute they see my horse coming down the street, it starts a mini stampede <laughs> towards that fence line. <laughs> yep, and then they'll line up that fence. Aww. Guys, you know when they're all lined up there, they look just like little bitty convicts. <laughs> 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 then we have uh, a couple more of our historic churches. The first one here is our Jewish synagogue, the Temple of the Nile, Israel. And it was built there in 1903 to replace the original church. It had burned down in uh, 1840. Uh, well, burned down in 1903, but it was built there in 1843. <laughs> Next to that is Trinity Episcopal. Trinity is our oldest church, uh, built there in 1822, and that church has stained glass windows worth a fortune, handmade by both John Mars and Louis Tiffany. Wow. Here's a beautiful home right here. This is uh, Glen Auburn, uh, built in 1875. That house is famous for its uh, beauty and its architectural design. And uh, these homes are very rare. They're valuable and uh, highly sought after. Over the years, many wealthy and famous people have tried to buy that house. And uh, one actually did back in 1982. The actor George Hamilton closed the deal on that house for his mother. This one over here is Magnolia Hall. That's another year-round tour. Hope you can visit. Loved our garden club. Built there in 1858. Voted most beautiful home in Natchez that year, despite the unusual brown color. And uh, this was uh, uh, built uh, out of brick, covered with plaster, and in scored to make it look like block. Uh, the whole house was painted brown to resemble a brownstone home. Because the brownstone block was not available anywhere in the south. So he built a, uh, a faux brownstone. Oh. As a matter of fact, there's a sign on the front porch that says it's a brownstone home today. And not a single brownstone block on the house. But I'm not going to argue with the garden club. I mean, they don't call them the blue haired mafia for nothing. <laughs> city was built here by the Spanish in 1789 and uh, this is what remains of that early uh, uh, Spanish city. Uh, as a matter of fact, all the uh, brick homes on the right here, some of your brick buildings further down the street, and even all the wooden homes to my left over there, these were all built in the late 1700s. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 
and uh, they're still in beautiful condition today. And uh, Holly Hedges is over here. This one was built in 1796, and the house still has its original English garden in the back there. Uh, the Dada House was built there in 1792. The servants' quarters also built at that time. And uh, this was the scene of a movie right here. And we had over 80 movies filmed here in Natchez. And uh, in the 90s, Disney did their version of the Huckleberry Finn story. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is uh, where they filmed that famous scene from the old movies and the books where Huckleberry Finn was painting that picket fence. Huh. But not least is the 1906 train depot here. And back in 1906, double tracks ran between the two buildings. Pastors got off on the right. Baggage and freight came off on the left. Uh, this was a loading dock, the main building, a distribution warehouse. And the those are all condos. <laughs> Thank you. 